the commercial reality of their existence is, is a lot less glamorous. So, um, you know, here's a typical ram paddock, and I'm sure you would have seen ram paddocks like this around this winter, um, where there's you know, not a lot of high quality feed there, and um, rams that look like they've done it fairly hard over making. So you'll all have different opinions on this, and where you sit on the spectrum. So there's the sort of the survival of the fittest type people. Who's in the survival of the fittest kind of camp? Yes. <laughs> got a few Pirandale type, uh, yes, hardy foot. What breed have you got? Composites. Composites, right, right. So you wouldn't fix a foot, you wouldn't give them a drench, you won't give them a shot of five no, one. I, I only breed for myself. So the okay. rams are like good. Okay. Okay. okay, yeah. And, and we do have some people that do look after their rams who do preventative health things and, and drench them and, and fix their feet and, and that type of thing. So we did a farm to sort of capture some of that opinion. Um, I won't go through just for the sake of time. Um, it's all fairly basic stuff. But just one thing that kept cropping up was um, uh, foot abscesses actually in terms of side rams is a, is a niggly problem that caused rams to drop out of their systems. I don't know, have you guys experienced foot abscesses? It does seem to be a ram specific thing. Um, well, you can get a bit ram. So we did a study. We really wanted to look at how much weight do rams lose over a making period, how fast do they recover that weight, and um, what sort of things impact um, whether, they, whether they drop out of the system or not. So we um, had uh, nine farms around the Otago and south of the region. There's about 500 rams in the study, and we visited them three times before making just after, and, um, and then in December. And we made a, a number of measurements around their body weight changes and look at their feet and teeth and things like that. Uh, the breeds represented are fairly uh, traditional uh, British breeds, uh, no fine wool and yeah, not many composites represented in the maternals. So the results, um, sometimes, you know, the, the, well, well, I won't get that one, but, um, on average, rams lost. 13% of their body weight over mating. So, and that seems to be a reasonable number. I've looked at some numbers from the UK which sort of uh, had similar uh, weight loss over mating, but we did have some plots that were losing 19, 20, 25% on average of their body weight over a two to three um, uh, cycle mating length. So that's what that's all mixed age rams or hobbits as well? Uh, it's two tooths and mixed age rams, no hobbits, yeah. So this is just sort of overall, on an individual basis, there are rams losing, you know, uh, 20 to 30, even up to 46% of their body weight over mating. If they had real extreme numbers, we dropped them out of the, out of the data set. So that, that's what they're doing, so they're losing weight. Um, so the real interesting thing for you guys is, is were there any breed differences in this study? Um, and, and by and large, there wasn't. Uh, when, when we looked at just dividing it by maternal and terminal size, so fairly rough division, there, there wasn't a lot of differences within the farms. Uh, there was one anomaly where he put his terminals back out with the, um, the hobbits for another two cycles. So obviously the time that the rams are out will determine how much weight they lose. Um, and you might have clients that have rams that stay up till the end of June and, and they come in looking terrible, don't they? Because if he dealt with those ewes for for um, you know, four or five cycles when they don't need to be there. Um, so that's that point. But I just highlighted these last three farms because they really show that it's the on-farm factors that are determining how much weight rams lose, not the genetics in this, in this example. If we did the study over a, a whole um, population in New Zealand over a number of years, perhaps we'd be able to tease out some genetic differences in, in, in weight change. But um, in this little study, it seems, you know, uh, on farm is the main determinant. So did they put that weight back on? Was there a reasonable amount of weight to lose? And by and large they did rebound the weight because the point is not working so I'll just point but uh, you can see here this is the weight they put back on, this is the weight they lost over mating and this is the weight they put back on until December. So you can see most of the rams are gaining more weight than what they started with. We just had um, a uh, couple, couple of farms where, where his rams are still quite light compared to their pre-mating weight and this farm here was the other high weight loss one but it, you can see here the number of rams left after um, before December was culled, culled a third of them on condition so it killed them all for the dogs.
Um, and this is just the dropout rate over mating, so 7% dropout over mating, and 23% overall. Um, we divided it per turn on terminal, but there weren't, weren't statistical differences there. Uh, again, it might be different if we had a much bigger data set. But just the, what are the causes of RAM loss? And, and you know, the answers to these things are often lie in the mundane and the, the obvious, but that's um, sometimes why we do these preliminary studies. I just want to look at this weight change thing over mating. Did that impact how many rams survive mating? It seems intuitive that the you know, would have an impact. We've got a slight uh, relationship between the few dots here. We've got these two farms down here that are losing 10% of their rams over mating for whatever reason and losing a lot of weight. So it's part of the story. And obviously um, the other big thing that you've already talked about, lameness. Uh, there were 42 rams recorded as lame when they went out for various forms of lameness. Uh, they, they probably didn't get any intervention, and by December, um, just under half of those rams had dropped out, so uh, as compared to 21% of non lame rams. So. Uh, just looking at by breed, um, the terminal size, there's not enough numbers to really, it's just anecdotal stuff again. The teeth, obviously, teeth are a big factor. And, and, and when we choose to colour ram, or when a ram chooses to fade away. So um, we looked at that, and if they had any teeth abnormality, that's this group here, 20% of them dropped out over the mating period. Um, They're obviously probably culled on condition rather than teeth, versus 7% of um, normal dentition. And then we just look at this relationship between teeth and age, and we can sort of see when they get to about four years, four years of life, um, that's, that there's a big drop off rate in the number of rams and, and, the, and a big increase in the number of teeth abnormalities picked up. Um, so uh, you, this is just looking at how can we determine how much of this weight loss was due to feeding or how much was it due to rams running around doing ram things and mating. And this is the best way we came up with doing that. And if we just look at the weight change of the ewes pre and post mating. So these two, ewe, two farms here, their the ewes are fairly static in body condition but their rams are still losing significant amounts of weight, so one condition score is about 20 kilos. So these ewes here that are, are losing weight, their rams are losing a lot more weight. So if you're seeing really skinny ewe, uh, rams coming in that have lost a lot of weight, you're probably finding that the ewes have um, uh, lost a bit as well. Was there a variance in that? You didn't follow like a lamb percentage of I, I, Yeah, I did play around with that a bit, but uh, in this farm here, he, scared, he was a high scanner actually, they were 100. 80 odd percent. It was in the dry 2016, and this farm here, he was the lowest uh, at uh, 150, I think. So, yeah. There was correlation between staff and ewes and rams? Well, yeah, probably losing half the body condition score to explain his poor scanning yeah, result. Over mating. Yeah. Over mating. Uh, yeah. There's good times, he boys lots of rams. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, we've been asked about the ram ratio and mob size, and it didn't seem to have an impact in this study. Uh, probably does, but we, we didn't sort of test it in, in a varied enough sense to, to really see if it was an effect. Um, just so interesting, we recorded lots of little animal health things that, that didn't sort of impact the overall numbers too much, but accumulatively they do. Um, but one, one thing I thought was interesting was of the rams that didn't have a dredge before they went out, um, these are the average faecal lead counts of mixed age rams in good condition before they went out. And, and this is sort of the range in faecal egg counts, and, and, and they, they, these rams were in scouring, pelleted, you know, normal sheep done. So, you know, they're carrying very high worm burdens, and John, I'd be interested to know your opinion, but I do know that, you know, with, in animals where their testosterone levels are going up, their, their immune system actually has, it, it changes in, in, in other breeds, in other species. But I wonder whether this is partly the fact that they're the testosterone ramping up so their suppression of parasitism is relaxed. Well, the reason for my figures there, I think, I think it's a less coherent there. The I mean, it'll be interesting to actually faecal egg count them every month or something. Do, 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 do you have anything on the use? On their faecal egg counts? Or oh, this is at the start of... This is just rams before mating. Oh, okay. Yeah. So these are good condition. I rams mean, are rams are always more susceptible to worms than use apart from like you and Right, right. So, it's a yeah. so I wonder whether this is similar to something like the periparturian rise of fecal egg yeah, yeah, yeah. when their testosterone's going up. No, no, it doesn't even matter about the testosterone. Just because they're a ram, right. they've got a higher level 
all year round. All the way through. Right. They're, they're all year round and like our youths. They're the weaker sex, just like in humans. So we chuck these out and they lose 15 to 20 percent of their body weight. You know, what effect is this parasite burden going to have on the on the ram when they're losing weight? Yeah. Blair, any any uh, do you think it'll have an impact? Why not? So. You're used to those sort of numbers. Do, do, do we have a, a, a ballpark, a ballpark fecal egg count for a normal adult animal? Well, about 500 is considered uh, uh, significant. It's an alien, but what are the numbers? Oh, and an adult use would be probably 250. I was going to say 50 to 250. Uh, Average. Yeah, Except well, for a very partial rise. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if, if it's like they've developed these trigger drenching levels and about if they use above two hundred and fifty X per gram average, then it's justified in drenching. Yeah. It's, it's just one. Um, so just some other sort of things that were recorded, you know, fighting injuries and abscesses. Um, very few are getting a five and one booster a year. They save lives, twenty five cents. For a thousand dollar ram, it's a fairly small investment. Doesn't take a lot of time. Um, so yeah, the, the summary. So what are we going to do with this? Do, do you guys think it's an issue? Um, is it something that we need to get clarity around a message for our commercial clients and, and, and farmers? Um, like when I was in England, they they've developed this little testicle thing here, which is a ram MOT, real basic message, uh, just around the feet, teeth testable tone and, and basic drenching. So um, yeah, do, do you think like a resource like that for your clients might be useful? <coughs> no? That you could develop in your own style there? You see it in bull catalogs all the time. You have to look after a young bull. Yep. Like it's, it's still a young ram when you sign as a tattoo. You, you didn't mention it probably because you didn't, um, didn't see it. Um, how many had pneumonia? pneumonia? Yeah, well, yeah, we were just, yeah, no, we didn't. Well, I wanted to do post mortems of as many as I could, but we, we never actually got the presented to us. And that's always been my thing, you know, when a farmer says to me, this ram dropped dead, why? And you never get to do a post mortem. And I thought doing a study like this, I'd get the chance to, but even still, they didn't. Get us out yeah, there. I, I, I suspect quite a few of the time that <laughs> um, if we if we look at the the uh, cross thing the sheep, we think it doesn't work on on pork and yes, 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 yes. Half a dozen things there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and and not I think I got the message right only about twenty or thirty percent of them had a disease. Right. And I'm harping on about the same thing. My thing is some of the feeding, if a ewe is an inefficient feed ewe, it's going to lose the loads of condition and it's going to be poor. And I think that explains probably potentially those other 70%. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what... And there's some of the things that ran. Well, there's the yonis and there's, you know... Yeah, no, no, I mean, they, 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 they looked at all those things. They looked at denture and the yonis, etc. Et so what, what's in it for you, this stuff? Uh, I think if we look, if you guys can get your commercial clients to look after your rams better, it's, it's obviously good for your reputation of the stock, um, and it's servicing what you what you sell. But you need feedback. Um, do, do your clients give you good feedback? <laughs> Not a lot. In my views, like most rams break down from what I've seen in my job, the, from um, uh, constitution issues soundness and feet. Now, um, that's something which... What, what's this constitution thing though? Is, well, it, is it just a worm burden? Is it no, no, hard just, to feed just, it? just the, the type of animal they may be. So um, they're skinny? Yeah. If, like, yeah that, that's like some point. people may breed some, like depending on the type of country they come off. And it's, it's interesting, did you notice much of a difference between breeds? Well that's my, my point, no. no. Yeah. But you didn't, like, didn't break the maternals and the like, down to different breeds. Oh yeah, we did, but it was just... This what, about, what about types of sheep, those sheep types? Did you know how you get your easier donor types, your great blanky ones, yeah. that sort of thing? There, there would be a we we can go through the data set, but yeah. it, we're probably not going to find much. Mm -hmm. But you can see that there's farms that, on average, all their rams are losing 20%. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so I think 
if you're seeing some rams that are really struggling, then probably they all wear. So, so, so sorry.